All right, check out this room. Pretty sweet. Of course, I got my stuff everywhere, but... Eh? Eh? There we go. That's the magic right there. Also, you guys want to see something crazy? Watch this. Yeah, that's creepy. Not a bad place to hang out. Nice. All right, people, important topic today. Let's talk about playing on a small mouthpiece. Why would you want to play on a small mouthpiece? Well, playing on a small mouthpiece can make it easier to play in the upper register and improve your endurance up there and also help you get a brighter, more cutting sound, which can really help when you're playing lead trumpet with a band. Now, I get messages with, from people sometimes where they're saying that they're having trouble playing like above high C or they have difficulty playing above the staff or doing lead type playing or playing in a big band. And often I ask them what kind of mouthpiece they play and they'll say something like, oh, I'm playing a one and a half C or a one and a quarter C. And while there are a few people out there that are famous for playing large mouthpieces, especially in the upper register, by and large, for the most part, it's gonna be easier if you can play on a smaller mouthpiece. Now the problem is, is that somebody will, that's used to playing on a large mouthpiece will be playing along, playing along, playing along, and then they'll stick in a smaller mouthpiece and they won't like their sound, they, their technique won't be as good, and even when they go to play in the upper register, they might find that they bottom out or they're airballing or they're actually not able to play as high on the smaller mouthpiece. So in this video, we are going to talk about how you learn to play on a smaller mouthpiece because yes, you have to practice playing on a smaller mouthpiece and learn how to adjust your playing accordingly. Now, when we're talking about buying a mouthpiece or selecting a mouthpiece uh, to make lead trumpet playing easier and to improve your endurance, the thing that I like to recommend is that you downsize the inner diameter of the rim. So what I mean by that is that if you play a one and a half C, the one and a half is the rim size, and then a size smaller than that would be like a 3C or a 5C, 7C, 10 and a half C. And as the number goes up on the Bach uh, mouthpieces, then what you get is a narrower inner diameter or the space in there between the rim. Now what this will do, the way that I thought about this when I was going through this change was, if you're doing pull-ups or you're doing some kind of weightlifting or something, when you're having to grab a really wide bar, your grip, you have to grip way harder to maintain, um, you know, to maintain the grip on that thing. But if the bar was narrower, then the muscles of your forearm are not going to have to work as hard. And that, you can use that analogy and apply it to the muscles of the embouchure. When the inner diameter is narrower than the actual tissue that's inside the inner diameter, there's actually less tissue that needs to vibrate. And by getting a uh, smaller vibration surface going across like that, it basically requires less grip from the embouchure. Now, when you have the uh, rim size go down in size like that, what ends up happening is that sometimes players can't uh, go quite as high, especially at the beginning. And the reason for this is because they're used to doing something. They're used to making some manipulation with their lips inside the mouthpiece. So whether they're stretching it out or opening up the aperture or something like that, those adjustments that you're making to get into the upper register are not going to work when you start playing on a smaller mouthpiece. So to actually play on the small mouthpiece, you need to become more efficient. And by becoming more efficient, what you end up getting is more of a flat surface here that actually doesn't go into the mouthpiece and more just kind of like lines up with it like that. So the way that I got used to playing on a smaller mouthpiece was by using these uh, Bob Reeves screw on rims. So basically the way the Reeves system works is that they got the under parts and then the rim screws on top there. So what I ended up doing was I started at something like a 43 rim, which I believe is maybe close to like a 3C rim or something like that um, in Bach terms. And so I started at the 43 and then all I did was I purchased a 40, 
two, which was the next size down. So, probably can't see that, but it's got a 42 stamped on the side. And what I did was I played on the 42 for, you know, a number of months. I don't remember exactly how long, maybe a couple months, uh, maybe as long as a year. At that time, I wasn't trying to systematically get smaller. I just decided to play on a smaller mouthpiece because I had a friend that had, is a really strong lead player and he was encouraging me to do that. So what ended up happening was that by practicing on the mouthpiece and getting doing my normal workout or my normal uh, routine stuff and technical practice, then I got used to playing on the narrower rim and I was actually able to get uh, just as warm of a sound, a nice warm round sound on the narrower rim and it made playing easier. So I thought to myself, well hey, that's cool. Maybe if I go down another size, then I can do the same thing. So then I just went down to the next one. I got myself a, uh, a 41 size rim and I just did the same thing. It would take me a couple months to totally sink into the 41 and then I went down again to the 40 size rim. Now, um, the, the big idea here though is that it took me about two or three months to feel comfortable on a new piece of equipment. And what I had to do was actually scale back my practicing spend more time in the middle of the horn, more time in the lower register, and playing very slowly, because you'll need to find a new balance, and like I said, come out of the mouthpiece more, and uh, learn to play independently from making adjustments with your lip. That'll, that'll change the, the whole thing, the whole thing. So, um, all you need to do is take a really simple exercise, like a lip slur or scale, or a, some kind of a line that you're working on, and just slow it way down and listen to the sound and work to where you can get a warm round sound in the middle and lower part of the horn. Doing that is going to help you adjust to the changes in back pressure. Um, and then once you're accustomed to that new feeling of back pressure, the greater amount of back pressure from a smaller mouthpiece, it'll change the way you play. It'll force you to open up back here um, to keep everything nice and open, to refine the movement of your tongue so that you're not relying so much on embouchure movement or more specifically adjustments of your aperture inside of the mouthpiece. Uh, check this out. This is what I've, the kind of stuff that I've been doing uh, that helps me play on a very small mouthpiece and use it for pretty much everything that I have to do. take everything nice and slow, use some simple exercises, and don't worry too much about range. The first thing you want to do is adjust to the back pressure of the mouthpiece as well as not making adjustments with your embouchure, with your aperture, to play higher. So it just takes some nice, slow, deliberate practice to do that, listening to the sound, using a metronome, and once you start to feel comfortable, then you can start to uh, increase your range a little bit. Do some lip slurs going up into the upper register, maybe add some lip trills right on top of the staff to get everything going upstairs. And once you adjust to the mouthpiece, I think you'll find that it actually does make playing uh, quite a bit easier and you're still capable of getting a nice round warm sound even on a relatively small mouthpiece. So um, I hope that helps and if you got any additional questions let me know, put them in the comment section below. Swing by BlackWallsTrumpetBasics.com, get on the mailing list and I will talk to you later.